Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out this video and also I'd like to welcome back my subscribers and if you're new to this channel and you, if you're into digital marketing and especially SEO and you get a lot of value out of this video please hit the like and subscribe button. Um, so once again another day another new development in SEO and today Google has announced that they've launched a new page speed report in Google Search Console. So in today's video I'm pretty much going to outline the significant implications of this new report and what you should do just prior to actually starting to action the insights in this report because I know that a lot of people are just going to find it, click onto it and just be eager to jump the gun and just start actioning things but there are a few considerations that should be looked into before you start to actually action anything based on these reports which I'll go through later in this video so bear with me guys so where to actually find this report before I start I'm gonna assume that you have a Google search console account with everything validated and set it up correctly and if that is not the case please do that beforehand so First of all, you log into your Google Search Console account, you find your website, and then you hit this new enhancement called Speed, which is labeled as experimental in brackets. And then you should find something along these lines, which would be a mobile and a desktop version of this paid speed report. So essentially, Google has automa automatically um, put together and labeled slow, moderate, and fast pages uh, that are basically on your website. However, there could be a circumstance where you may not have data and in this case, there could be a few reasons for that. Number one, it could be that just um, it's experimental, um, Google is still rolling this out as um, uh, this video is being recorded at the moment and overall your website may not be up to date from that perspective. Google hasn't just, um, had enough time to basically roll this up and maybe in the next few days, in a few weeks, this report will be populated. Another reason would could be that there could be some issues from an SEO perspective, potentially. Um, there might not be too much traffic coming from your website. I mean, so I should say going to your website rather than coming to your website, same, same. And that could also be another reason why there isn't enough data yet that Google has collected in terms of paid speed performance. Um, so basically, the main reason, um, obviously, Google's color-coded it is it, they're basically continuing a similar um, trajectory that they've done for previous paid speed tools such as the paid speed insights tool and lighthouse so my assumption is is that they're using a very similar um, color grading pattern so this um, overall definition is basically what Google has been doing for the lighthouse slash paid speed insights tools so 0 to 40 on their tools means slow slash red um, anything that's 50 to 89 is roughly that yellowy, ambery color. And then 90 to 100 is essentially something that is very fast loading. Moving on, um, within this report itself, overall, um, as an SEO and as a digital marketer, you didn't really have an option to see a snapshot of your entire site. So a really interesting development, if you were not using an API previously, um, you definitely have a larger idea of how certain pages are performing from a page speed perspective. This is important because paid speed is good for um, improving UX. And of course, it is a minor, minor ranking factor, especially on mobile devices and desktop devices. Um, it's very important to ensure that your paid speed and UX is as optimal as possible. So overall, um, I have two examples below of two separate websites, and as you can see, definitely with example one, um, the, you know, getting this large amount of information, you can understand there's, there's thousands of pages that can be optimized. And in this case, example two, there's significantly less pages. But what's interesting is this this example is it's showing that there are slow pages, moderate pages of uh, page speed, but no fast pages. So this is one of those things I'm kind of taking with a grain of salt when I'm looking into the experimental perspective of this report. There's definitely a few bugs and glitches as we can see. Um, and then I'll just go to a little bit more detail in these areas here below uh, of certain aspects that can be fixed from um, page speed. So 
Once again, um, some of these definitions may sound familiar, but they've been um, essentially shortened. So, for example, FCP is first contained for paint. FID, as you can see here, is first input delay. So, uh, if you're wondering where you've seen this before, if you go into the Paid Speed Insights tool, if you plug in a website, you will basically get this type of result. And then, if you're interested to learn more, you can go here and it tells you all the information of what specific page speed issue is, what it is, and essentially how you can fix it by um, going into the learn more. So that's essentially the information you get here. So Google Search Console report and page speed insights don't really provide that much differing amount of information. I do feel that PageSpeed Insights is a little bit more detailed. However, it is nice to have this on hand. And if you're those who are interested in what those exclamation marks are, where it says not started, it means that the validation process hasn't actually started. So that perfectly moves on to my next segment, which is basically before using the support, as I mentioned earlier in this video, a lot of people are going to be eager and potentially will jump the gun and start to action these reports. And even though might even try to report to um, other people within the company or clients, if they're SEOs or digital marketers, they might start just basically taking this information and reporting it as is. And once again, it's very important to take into consideration this is an experimental report. There are bugs, there are glitches, and the data could potentially even be outdated. It is important, number two, to basically look at the dates that are being reported on because that's very crucial and validate any fixes before using the report because once again, data might not be accurate. So, number one, check the date. This essentially means when Google Search Console report was last updated overall. So according to this, it was updated on the 3rd of November 2019. However, when you go a little bit deeper, once again, it does say that it was updated on the 3rd of November 2019. But this particular issue was detected on the 4th of April 2019. So definitely, I would be looking at validating this fix prior before um, basically just taking these numbers as they are in the report because it is interesting this report wasn't available to us in April however it is available to us now in late I, I should say no apologies in early November of 2019 so there's definitely a lot of months in between this particular um, the first detection so I definitely go and try to validate these fixes give it a few days and see if these numbers change so that's definitely my advice to anyone who's looking into those reports overall I find this a great and very very helpful and useful feature that we have a larger snapshot we don't have to be as heavily reliant on APIs as we previously were however at the same time please look at the dates and please validate anything before moving forward and also take into consideration once again that this is an experimental report so data may not always be accurate and i guarantee you that there will be changes and amendments and future edits to all of these reports um, as time goes on and as new rollouts occur so once again guys thank you for watching and if you get uh, um, a lot of value out of this video please hit the like and subscribe button again i'll be putting out another video shortly and um, stay tuned guys. Thank you so much for your time.